Retrotrutide happens to be one of the most potent weight loss drugs out there. In trials, people lost over 48 weeks, a staggering 24% of their body weight, which outperformed the well-established drug Manjaro, where people lost 22.5 and that was over 72 weeks. And while yes, Retrotrutide is yet to be FDA approved, it's still relatively expensive when you compare it to Manjaro, otherwise known as Tezepatide, which costs around, say, £170 a month, depending on your dose, Whereas uh, Retrotrutide, that, that, that could be well over 200 pounds for one vial, but then how long does that vial uh, last? Which made me think there's not that much of a market for Retrotrutide if you can get branded Manjaro pens, the convenience of that, rather than having to uh, reconstitute your own uh, vial of it. But I was surprised people do want Retrotrutide. It's about making that vial last, spreading out the doses, which I'll get onto. But first, let's just compare Tezepatide versus Retrotrutide. First of all, let's cover Tezepatide. It hits two different receptors, GLP-1, as I'm sure you're aware. So that uh, helps with appetite suppression, insulin uh, secretion, as well as uh, slows gastric emptying. That helps with insulin sensitivity and adipose tissue. So that's why it's a diabetic drug. Commonly when people get diagnosed with diabetes, you know, that year or two leading up to that, they notice a huge amount of visceral fat. Their, their stomach just tends, tends to just start uh, popping out in that time leading up to it where your visceral fat is running out of adipose tissue, fat cells to store that uh, extra glucose. But in addition to that, you're improving fat utilization over carbohydrates. In other words, lipolysis, using fat as energy rather than glycolysis. Also, you're reducing lipogenesis, fat creation post-meal, so that could uh, translate into elevated triglycerides, you're reducing that. But particularly because of its insulin sensitizing effect to Zepatide, I've seen some amazing reversals in chronic inflammation in my clinic. Moving on to Retrotrutide, obviously you've got those two receptors, GLP-1 and GRP, but you've also got glucagon, and this stimulates uh, thermogenesis, so you're, you're increasing your basal metabolic rate, so that uh, further still increases lipolysis, turning fat into energy. So obviously by promoting fat oxidization, it has more of a muscle preserving effect. And yes, yeah, certainly tezepatide compared to uh, semaglutide, that's still much better for preserving muscle, but uh, retrotrutide seems to be a stage further. And in, even in some animal models, there's been no uh, muscle loss. There's even been some indication that where they've actually not just preserved it, they've actually promoted a little bit of muscle gain, which is crazy. Further advantages of retrotrutide is it seems to have further reduction in hepatic fat, you know, uh, fat around your liver and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I'd say it's one of the most common diseases out there. I mean, at least in middle-aged people. So to touch on nausea, a lot of people reported to me that semaglutide, you get a lot of nausea. Tezepatide, yes, some people do, some people don't. I've, I've even come across people who've done very low doses of tezepatide, even 1.25 milligrams once a week, and they still get nausea from it, but they didn't with retrotrutide, interestingly. But then others have done 2.5 milligrams or even more of tezepatide with little or no nausea from it. And in the trials of retrotrutide, they are saying some people are reporting nausea with it, but it doesn't seem to be translating in the real world. I'm not hearing it as much. People are getting good weight loss responses from it, but very low in the, the way of like side effects like GI issues. And I think that comes down to dosing as well, because as I alluded to earlier with retrotrutide, now, because obviously if you're not getting, you can you can spread out the doses and that's what I'm finding people report back to me is doing as little as half a milligram of uh, retrotrutide, just doing that say twice a week, something like that. And then they just don't seem to get any nausea. Even going up higher, other people have done like two milligrams of it. And even then they haven't reported back nausea. So it seems to be in the real world, it seems to have less of that side effect. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. As I elucidated to earlier, both of these are great for metabolic inflammation. Obviously, retrotrutide is a stage further, so I'm going to be keeping my eyes on the data in reversing chronic inflammation with that. One thing to be mindful of with any of these weight loss injections is having a decent amount of, especially B vitamins, in there. So first of all, with uh, retrotrutide, if you're increasing your basal metabolic rate, lipolysis, activating mitochondria, you know, uh, 
thermogenesis and then you're basically you're, you're going to be going through b vitamins at a faster rate and then any of these weight loss injections i mentioned that obviously being a glp1 they're slowing down at gastric emptying so that's reducing stomach acid and that's important for b12 absorption so and then so you've got a double whammy there if you're eating say 30 percent less food say 30 percent less b12 but then you're you have less absorption of it as well then you're even more likely to be deficient there's all sorts of B vitamins that you'll need extra of, say B2 or riboflavin that supports fatty acid oxidization as well as uh, electron transport into the mitochondria. Although I don't use retitrutide myself, but all my clients have been buying it from peptides of London. I've used other peptides of theirs like GHKCU and Epitalon, and that latter one is actually being used by a top university in a new study that's coming out. And to circle back on that other peptide, GHKCU, it's a very important one for upregulating genes involved in collagen and elastin production, which is critical when you're losing a lot of body weight. I mentioned a bit earlier about people losing 24% of their body weight in 48 weeks. So what happens to your skin, the older you get that collagen and, and especially elastin production, that's critical for keeping the skin, obviously, the elasticity. And so doing a vial of it here and there, it being a very cheap peptide, is a safe bet if you're losing a lot of weight. Other things, you know, vitamin C, that's essential for collagen synthesis. So just doing these little things just to prevent that sagging skin, I think, is important. So if you like that, then here's another video on GHKCU. In this video, I focus more on its anti-inflammatory effects, but I do go into its also its skin-boosting properties as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.